Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here back with another video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at these top tier bikes in the marketplace and we're gonna figure out what makes them worth $13,000. I do a lot of these videos of the S-Works Tarmax and, and top high-end bikes and a lot of the comments are always saying $13,000, I'll take two. Uh, $10,000, that's cheap, uh, that's not worth that, that's dumb, I could buy a Honda a motorbike. But we're gonna break down um, what makes this stuff thirteen thousand dollars? People, are, I've also seen comments saying um, carbon is a dollar a gram or something like that or whatever, and the cost of materials on that bike uh, don't equal to what the price is. Obviously, I mean it's not like I'm just in the back of the shop when when a consumer comes into my store and I just hand make this bike myself, like like weave the carbon and do the whole process. And I have a hundred percent margin. There are margins to these bikes. There's people that have to pay, and there's a whole supply chain. That's the reason why this stuff ends up being $13,000 or whatnot. So um, we'll get into it, and I'm going to kind of take you through the whole process of it with a beautiful um, slideshow I did, or like a painting project I did. So hopefully you guys enjoy. This is S-Works Tarmac 13,000, Trek Madone SLR 9, probably 13,000, and the new Penarel Dogma F, probably like $15,000. I have no idea. But... Let's get into it. So, first off, I hope you guys like my images. Uh, brainstorming. So, when they build these bikes and put them together, uh, obviously they need a group of people. Uh, engineers, uh, design people, um, just people who have degrees and know what they're doing. I don't know if they know what they're doing, but people who have degrees who are supposed to be in that position of job to make that thing. So, they want to be like, okay, well, we have the SL6. How can we make it better? What can we do? What, how can we improve? So, they need people. They have to pay people with degrees that have some kind of idea on how to innovate and take it forward because of the fact that there's such a drive and such a high demand for change every single year. Um, and that's basically because of consumers and people want change so fast. And that's why people say, oh, my bike is this and I buy this bike and as soon as I buy it, then the new model comes out. Well, that's just because consumers want something new. You know, they, they don't want to hang around. It's not like the old days where a movie would come out in the movie theaters and you would wait two years to get on DVD. No, everyone wants as soon as something gets released, they want it, and then they want the next best thing. They get they immediately get the product in their hand. They go, I wonder what they're going to do next. So there's no more patience. There's no more anything like that in the world. As soon as the SL6 comes out, they're specialized on to, okay, how can we make the SL7? So specialized, one of their biggest models used to be Innovate or Die. Um, so every single three years or so, three or four years, they'll usually change up the product line in terms of, uh, like, like you'll see the Tarmac will change, the Roubaix will change. They'll, they'll do something crazy or change to it. If they, you know, a lot of companies will. Trek, Pinarello, they'll always kind of leave the product out there for two or three years and then change it um, because of the fact the consumers want it. So you have to pay uh, an engineer team to make sure it's safe. You have to pay uh, a guy with a, a stick to make sure that he's leading the crew of a charging, you know, saying like, hey, you have to do that, you have to do that. Is this safe or is this going to work? We have to get lawyers. Uh, we have to pay salaries, blah, blah, and that all costs money so brainstorming check no i don't want to save that next we go into which this could fall into brainstorming but r d research and development so again you need a team of people like i said before to the research so then you're going to say well how do we make the sl6 sorry i keep on using specialized but that's why i use better into the sl7 how, what can we do so they have to sit there and Okay, we can make this more aero. They put into wind tunnel testing. Specialized one of the only companies with their own wind tunnels on site. So that's a lot of money they have to pay. That's the reason why a lot of their bikes is expensive because they have their own freaking wind tunnel on site where you can literally see and, and literally put a helmet in there if they want. or put. But they have employees there who know how to work it. They have people who can read that data and uh, analyze it and go on and go forth. So they're saying, well, this is, the, SL this is, the SL6 is going to be faster than the SL7 because... This is more aerodynamic in the wind tunnel. This is lighter. The bottom bracket's threaded. Um, integrated cable routing. Why is this going to be more money? Because we're putting more time and effort into figuring out. Not really because of the fact that there's more carbon or less carbon or more materials or this is space ages better than what it is. Um, but no, it's just because of the fact that they have to take time, effort. They're paying people to figure this out. I'm making a YouTube video, bro. Chill out. Um, and they're, and they're paying people to figure out what's going on. So R&D, and this again costs, say with me, money. There's a reason for that. I hope you guys are enjoying my slideshow. So yes, so wind tunnel testing, uh, people around there develop uh, analytics in terms of um, arrow weight reduction, blah, 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 and pretty much price compare. And, and that, again, costs money that they have to pay them. So boom, don't save. Next. 
materials of it. Now this is gonna be more of a, Specialized is a multi-million dollar company. So I'm sure they get this, the cost of materials really cheap because they're doing such a large quantity. But you guys have to take this into consideration because everyone, I hear this excuse all the time. They probably get that stuff for a dollar. They probably get that stuff so cheap, pennies on a dollar, it doesn't cost them. But again, if you want that, if you really do want that, you go open up your own multi-million dollar company. You go put up the money for it, you front the money for it, you pay employees, you take the risk of failing, you do all that stuff, and then you'll get that reward. Now, because of that, they've done that, they succeeded and they put that stuff up. Um, these companies are able to put forth money into getting cheaper costs of carbon materials, paint, aluminum, uh, steel, uh, and I hope you guys are my writing, uh, titanium. Titanium, so again, th this is all, it costs money. Now, I'm sure we all know that they probably get this stuff for dirt cheap, the carbon. Um, they have the 9R, 10R, and 12R differences of carbon as well. Uh, they're very small differences, but you can definitely feel the difference between a Pro and S-Works, and same with SL and SLR by Trek, and same with Penarello. Between the, their T900 and T1100, there are differences in the carbon. Uh, we don't know how much the differences are in terms of, like, performance boost and stuff like that. I wish that companies would make, like, I wish Trek, Specialized, Pinarello, Colnago, all these top-tier companies would be like, hey, the Pro Tarmac compared to the S-Works Tarmac would give you would save you this many watts, you know, or like really put a number of statistic behind it. I think that they would do great with it. So, um, I, I've, I've, I've shouted out before, but I don't think anyone's really heated or, or heard me. Um, but I definitely think that if you put a pro frame costs X amount of money and you get that pro frame and then the difference between a pro and S works frame, be like, this will save you this much watts. Like really put the, the, the numbers behind it. Um, and, and I think it'll, it'll probably boost sales, but I mean, it doesn't matter because Every single bike sold anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But yes, so again, so these companies put up a lot of risk to get these things for super cheap. If we were to go, if me or you or Joe Schmo was to go out and buy a carbon frame, we'd get it for uh, pretty expensive, and we wouldn't be able to mass produce these. We could probably buy a pretty cheap carbon Chinese bike, but you wouldn't be able to mass produce them, so their prices are different, and the reason why they get that benefit is because they put the money. So again, don't sit here and say that their bikes are insanely overpriced and consumer demand and stuff like that blah 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 um no it's just because they're again they're they're taking the risk they're putting up the capital they're doing all this stuff like that they have the to worry about it you just have to sit there and pay and figure out which bike you wanted to get uh factory so then once they got their their materials down the r d down the brainstorming down then they have to actually put it to a board get a beautiful factory here and wherever it's located i'm sure it's nice and sunny and Everyone wants to be there. There's a sun right here. Uh, but yes, they have factories they have to probably not even own, but maybe even use or buy or have someone sent over there for a factory worker. The bikes are made in Taiwan, China, wherever they are. Um, uh, they're being manufactured there, so they have to pay for that. They have to pay for labor. They have to pay for one of their, or probably a whole team of, of employees over here in this area, um, making sure everything's going good. Get a little sky over here. And that, again, costs money and stuff like that. Now, that's going to come down to trickle down. They can probably use it for the SL6 frames, the comps, the experts, the pros, the S-Works. And, again, they'll probably get that labor for really cheap. But, again, it does trickle down to how much they're producing. So, especially with the high demand right now where everyone is doing it and they're getting backlogged. And there are price raises for COVID for sure. Um, that's going to cost way more money now. So, people will be like, why is the price range happening? Because everyone wants to be inside the factory and make money. A little sidewalk. There's probably dogs. People, you know, really cool people walking. There's dogs. This guy, he has a dog. He's happy. Um, I'm such a good drawer. Lit. Okay. So again, that costs money. So we got R and D, uh, brainstorming R and D, research materials, and then factory. Yes. Again, we're, we're seeing the costs add up here. We have a bunch of costs going here. Then we go into advertisement. So once we make this beautiful product and specialize and track and these big name companies, they probably already have the name out there. But, you know, if you're a smaller company, you're even, I mean, you're a bigger company, you're still paying for advertisement. So you're paying to promote it on Instagram, Facebook, uh, social media platforms. You're going to pay pro riders top money to use your product in world tours that people want to be in. Uh, Sagan. Cavendish, this guy is killing it, by the way. Shout out to Cavendish. I my first S Works was a uh, the Green Venge Cavendish Venge. 
Um, amazing. Uh, that was, and my favorite bike by him was the McLaren, the McLaren Vans for sure. That bike was amazing. But yes, they have to pay a lot of money in advertisement. That's probably where a lot of this money goes to. They're paying for three teams to be in there. They they want them to ride their bikes. They want these people exclusively to ride them. Um, you know, so they're giving these bikes away. They're giving products away. They're paying for commercials in the Tour de France. They're paying for everything. So there's advertisement going into that, and they're paying. They have a whole Sagan collection. So there's probably a big chunk of money going into that too, which they're probably recycling. So they pay Sagan. That money gets looped back into the price of the Sagan bike. That's the reason why it's fifteen hundred dollars more because people want to buy it, and that money gets yielded back into someone's pocket probably a big suit who knows that's just speculation i did not know that then the last one is cost of business now this is obviously just what people don't really think of but this is just the, the truth of it cost of business we have shipping which shipping has gone up through the roof right now because of covid uh retailers they have to pay people like us or we we get a, a percentage of margin that they give to us and then they have to take a slice of it and that's why there's direct to consumer business platforms going on right now like canyon and ventum and stuff like that but retailers we handle the brute force of line defense of consumers and not getting them over the warranties of that they have to pay a customer service team to answer phones they have to pay a warranty situation to pay, uh, handle phones they have to take back product that fails sales staff to handle with us uh pay for their building that they have in, in california or trek or wherever they have them at uh house employees salaries everything like that electricity which people just still think that that grows on trees you know that all goes back into the product of it now being all this this that was my whole situation i have no business degree i have no nothing like that i've just been in retail for a really long time but being said that you can also hit, sit here and debate well why is the sl6 that much money the sl6 comp the expert and stuff like that that again is because it trickles down from technology so usually when you see these big companies release something it's usually their higher tier of it and then as the time goes on, years go down or, or months go down, they're able to take that technology and that product they, they've released. They're like, oh, this master, we molded it. It's great. Everything works. They're able to take that and kind of trickle it down to the uh, lower tier stuff. They already have the business platform. They don't have to do all the research on it. And like, all right, screw you, engineer. Screw you. We already know what we're doing. Just take this, this, uh, this mold and here you go and just make it cheaper. And then that's what happens. So, um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I think there's, that's it. There's not really any kind of slide, I think. What's this one? My greed price gouge. I take your mic. Oh, that's not, that's not, uh, that's not how they get out there. Oh, God. Uh, I don't take money. That's not funny. Oh, God. Oh, but yes, uh, that was my, uh, situation of the YouTube, uh, explaining why bikes are thirteen to $14,000. Yes, we can sit here and say all day that they're overpriced. We know that they're a cost of a motorcycle. We know that they're a cost of everything. But like any kind of hobby, stuff is expensive. You can get into the sport of cycling for cheap with an $800 bike, aluminum bike. But if you want the top tier stuff, it's going to be $13,000, like any hobby. You can buy golf clubs that are cheap, but you can also buy golf clubs that are really stupidly expensive. You can buy scuba gear that's cheap. I wouldn't buy scuba gear that's cheap. But I know my buddy who has a scuba kit set that's like eight grand, and I don't even like scuba diving. I'm like, why are you buying that? It's dumb. But again, it makes him happy, and that's what he enjoys. So there is stuff that, you know, it's always on the top tier of stuff. Like motorcycles as well. People are saying, I could buy a CBR or a Jigster 750 for that much money of $13,000. You can buy a really cheap motorcycle or you can buy like a massive Ducati for like $30,000. And people will be like, oh, I don't need that Ducati. I can do the same thing on that. It's all relevant and it's all preference to what you like to do. If it makes you happy because it's bright, black and red and says S-Works and you got $13,000 burning a hole in your pocket, go for it. Spend it. If you like the Dogma F because it has rim brakes and it's $15,000 and you want to say, I want to buy a Dogma, Go for it. Spend it because you're happy for it. I don't control your money. Do what you want. But uh, we have to start realizing that stuff is just going to be expensive in this world. And, uh, yeah, even cars. I mean, I like driving a nice truck. That's why I bought a nice truck. I could have bought a really uh, low-tiered truck as well and been happy and probably pulled the same amount of weight with it. But I want the nicer stuff inside. I want it to look cool. I want to have black rims. Again, just because of the fact that I want it. So, I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, for all you guys watching, I hope this blows up because I <laughs> took me a lot of time with that paint drawings, and uh, I put a lot of effort into it. So if you guys enjoy it, leave a like, comment. Uh, I do have an 18,000 subscriber giveaway coming up. 18 is a number that's significant to me, so I'm going to do something small. And then probably 20K, we'll see if we do a face reveal or not. I don't know yet. But thank you guys again so much for everything. You guys have been great. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.